Hi guys, my name is Ben and today I'm going to be using the beef and lentil food pack to make beef and lentil burgers. Really the first thing with that is kind of pre-preparing all your ingredients. So here I've got one carrot that I've grated, one onion that I've finely diced up, an egg which I've quickly whisked. In here is a quarter cup of breadcrumbs and then two teaspoons of mixed herbs. And then I've got one can of lentils which I've drained and then I've always also rinsed that under cold water just in kind of uh, until it kind of runs clear just to get that kind of packing liquid. If you put that in as well, it kind of gives it like a bit of weird taste and um, there's a bit of protein in there as well so the burgers won't really form right. So pretty much to that as well is 500 grams of mince too. So just gonna pop those all into a nice big bowl and then give them a big kind of mix together. Um, with it as well, if you've got some extra stuff at home, so if you've got things like, um, kind of like, you know, onion powder, garlic powder, um, just anything you kind of want to add to the burgers to give them a little bit more extra flavour, that's fine to do. You can kind of make them spiced as well. So if you've got some like Middle Eastern spices or something like that, just to kind of give them a change if you've cooked them once already. So I'm just going to pop everything in and give them a nice mix and then also just form those into patties. So everything that you need for this dish comes in the food bank food pack. Um, and then really kind of, I'm not trying to overwork everything together. Uh, if you do that, um, you can kind of overwork the mince and it'll become more like a springy sausage texture rather than kind of like fold apart burger texture. So really kind of just want to bring it together and make sure it's all kind of evenly mixed with those spices and breadcrumbs throughout. With this one, it serves a family of four. So I'm just gonna split this mince up directly into four bits and then kind of go with there with how big I wanna make the burgers. So you can kind of have them quite nice and thin and then have two patties per one or kind of if you want like half a patty on the side or just one nice kind of big one and cook it over a lower heat and just kind of make the decision with how you'd like to do it. With that, you can kind of see the four like even shapes and then with those, I reckon I'm just gonna do nice kind of big ones. So on a nice clean chopping board, I'm just gonna kind of shape them out into patties just using my hands. Uh, it doesn't have to be like kind of a patty you get at a fast food joint or a kind of like a nice burger place or anything like that, you know. If you're expecting kind of homemade beef patties for me, especially these thick ones with lots of ingredients in them, if they've got rough edges and stuff like that, I think it just kind of adds to it. It looks like it's homemade rather than kind of this factory processed meat, which I think adds to all the dishes. So with flatting it out, um, you just kind of want to put your palm kind of like a high five motion, I guess, but with everything closed and then hold it nice and steady in one hand. And then, yeah, just kind of give it a nice kind of pat out with the palm, just in a, like a even fashion, I guess. So you want it kind of flat, so everything's gonna cook evenly. Now I wanna put them on the pan as well, and kind of give them another flatten down for two reasons. That will kind of create more surface area, which gives that nice kind of uh, crispy bit on the outside of the burger. And then as well, kind of give it more of a flat surface. So I've done all my burgers here. Um, you could put them in the fridge to kind of firm up uh, just so they kind of hold together because with this burger mixture there's a chance that it's going to kind of fall apart in the pan. Look, if that happens, it's not the end of the earth. Uh, you know, with a burger you're going to bite into it anyway. It's a sandwich. Uh, it's possibly going to fall apart in your mouth. Uh, I think that's a good thing. Um, if it does it in the pan, you know, just keep it in two bits and just cook them separately like it's just, you know, two bits of burgers. Um, the reason why you put it in the fridge is just so it kind of once meat goes colder, it will kind of firm up a little bit together uh, and then give you like a nicer kind of patty to cook. Um, I'm just going to do them straight away today. Uh, we should be fine. We'll see how they go. If they fall apart, they fall apart. Get a pan onto a medium heat. So I'd let it heat up if you've got a, I'm working on induction, so it's going to heat a lot faster. If you've got a gas stove, I'd just put it on the largest burner you have and then put that halfway, I'd say and then let that go for about a minute or two. If you've got an electric, um, pretty much the same. 
You just, with it, because we're cooking so much, you kind of want it uh, as large surface area as possible. With this pan, I'm only going to do two burgers at a time. The major thing is never to overcrowd your pan. That goes for all cooking when you need to kind of sear things. As soon as you start overcrowding your pan, it's going to stew instead of sear. So what that would look like is you're going to see all the moisture and the fat kind of come out and then you'd see it just be this kind of a, a little bit of a mess almost is the best way to describe it, um, which is not what you want. That kind of releases all the fat from that we've got in the mince from the burgers out into the pan rather than keeping it in the burgers and having them nice and juicy. So a good way to test with this recipe if your pan's ready or not is dip your fingers in a little bit of water and then kind of throw it on the pan. And if it kind of just steams up immediately like that and you see all the water kind of beating around, I'd say that's about ready. So to the pan, I am gonna add a generous glug of oil. And then I'm gonna stir that around just so, or swirl it around. So it kind of covers everywhere, rather than just being in one spot. And then we'll pop these directly on. So like I said, I'm just gonna do two at a time, mainly just because I don't wanna overcrowd them. Um, again, it's quite, a medium heat with these ones. If you're doing them thinner, you could do it a higher heat. And the reason I'm doing the medium heat is just so it cooks all the way through. Uh, with the mince, you know, some places do serve it medium rare. It's up to you, kind of. It's a similar how to a steak. But with cooking burgers, I, as a rule of thumb, go one above how I'd like to cook a steak. So if I like my steak medium rare, I just go to medium on my burger, if that makes sense. So with these ones, you know, I'd say it'd be anywhere between three to six minutes either side. Kind of depends on how, what pan you're using and then how hot your burner is and then how thick your mixture is too. While my patties are cooking as well, um, I'm just gonna nicely season them on the side that hasn't been cooked yet. And then once I flip that, I'll uh, season the other side too. Um, seasoning with burger patties, for me, I'd say like a generous pinch of salt. How much a pinch of salt is, is really the same as like how long a piece of string is. Um, it's up to the person, uh, you know, it's, you know, not only that my pinch will be bigger, smaller than your pinch, it's also that how much salt you should add to your food is really dependent on you. If you're on a salt reduced diet, obviously you need to add less, um, but with salt, look, as, as a cooking perspective, it makes things taste how they kind of should and what they are. Salt doesn't generally, to a point, make things taste salty unless you go too far. It mainly makes things kind of express their flavors the best. So these burgers are looking like they're about ready to flip. Um, how I'm kind of testing that is just kind of, you can see really one of the good bits about this being a non-stick pan is you can kind of see the caramelization around the edges. While the meat kind of shrinks while it cooks, you can kind of see that it's cooked around it, if that makes sense. Um, and then you can just kind of give it like a little lift up as well and have a check. Uh, like I said earlier, um, with these kind of burgers with all the stuff in them and then the egg binding agent, uh, I'm gonna give it a flip. Hopefully they stay together. If they don't stay together, they don't stay together and that's, we'll move on. One of the good bits about using a non-stick pan is that you're gonna get really fantastic caramelization throughout on the bottom of the burger. Um, if you do have trouble and you've cooked this recipe a few times with them kind of splitting apart, you can use more breadcrumbs and probably about another egg and then just work the mixture a bit more when you mix it together and that will kind of make it bind a lot more. But today we're going to be brave and I'm going to attempt to flip. All right, that one's kind of come apart, but it'll stick together. And I reckon this second one hopefully going to have a bit more luck with. Look, again, with homemade burgers, you know, I personally at home aren't expecting a perfect burger. I hope that you and your family are the same. Uh, it happens to everyone. Um, and that's part of the fun of cooking, I think, is that uh, every time it's going to be different, but really flavour is the kind of thing that matters. One of the great bits about uh, this meal, all of the meals in the food bank food packs is that it's really a complete meal in the sense of 
what you kind of nutritionally need as well. So in the burger patties, rather than just being straight meat, like you'd get at a lot of kind of takeaway places and things like that, you know, there's veggies in there. We're going to add lots of veggies to the actual rolls and things like that. So really you're kind of giving yourself what your body needs as well as kind of fueling it with a delicious meal too. These patties are pretty much done. Um, I'm just going to quickly construct the burgers. With it, uh, with what you kind of, how you want to construct a burger, um, if you're going to put any sauces on, I'd sauce both sides. Um, I'm a big fan of American, uh, American style mustard, uh, ketchup and mayonnaise. That's just me personally. Um, if you've got any sauces, you can put them on. If you put spices in there that kind of lean towards more of a different cuisine, kind of follow those through, if that makes sense. Um, and then with burger construction, is other than the sauces, you don't want anything wet touching the, uh, the buns. So what I mean by wet is things like tomatoes and vegetables like that. Um, so really kind of how I'm going to go about that is make kind of like a bed of lettuce at the bottom of these. And then on top of that is where I'm going to put the tomatoes. And then on top of the tomatoes is where I'm going to put my patty. So for me, I'd probably go about a nice handful of mixed salad uh, lettuce for the kind of lettuce salad -y component and then about half a chopped tomato, nicely done. And pop that in. And then again, with transferring things, if you can, it's best to kind of move it from the pan and bring the pan to the plate rather than the other way around. And then just pop the lid up on top. And all done. This has been a Cabana production.